you were one of the only shows that deliver real authenticity in terms of the content that you do. It's not just about covering the industry. You you cover it from a, from perspective of working people in the industry. G'day everyone, I'm Pete Techman Komen and welcome to the Broad Tech Effect. And yes. today we have a very special show because we have some very, very special guests. But before we introduce those guests, the Tech Effect or the Broad Tech Effect as we're going to call it today would not be the same without the bearded man, Mr. Mark, the bearded tech scan. Welcome, G'day, Mark. Pete. G'day, mate. How are you? <laughs> I'm great. How are you doing? Mate, I'm good. I'm, I'm actually uh, having a whiskey and, and I'm doing this. Uh, I'm doing this. This could actually be a new thing, you know. I actually might roll with this because, as I say, the, the more I drink, the funnier I get. But um, yes. <laughs> I'm actually having this is to uh, this week. Actually, a new blokes in the UK might know that um, Andrew Simons uh, died in a car accident. That's so. This yes. is a, uh, a a rest rest in peace, Roy. This is a, a cheers to Roy and uh, having a drink for him. Uh, so yeah, that's why well, I'm. That's my excuse anyway. I'm going. That's so, yeah, look, <laughs> I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right, Pete. And uh, it's uh, good to be. It's good to be back on camera for crying out loud. Like, it's been like a it's little been. while. It's been too long, and we've yep. had people. I, I know on my side of the fence, people have been messaging me. It's like, are you okay? We haven't heard from you for a while. You know, we haven't seen a tech effect, so we, we uh, must be so popular. That's it. Yeah, I know. I mean, that was my mum. That was my mum. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I mean, she's a fan. She counts. You know, like, you know, but it's good to be back. It's good to see it's your smiley great. face. But, uh, Mark. I'm always smiling, Pete. But look, it's been. Um, I have to. I don't know if you noticed. I had to do a little quick dash to go and change my shirt. Um, the the reason is is um, they they say blacks a bit uh, thinning. So if I go that that way, <laughs> <laughs> I've got to breathe in a little bit because um, it, it's been a, yeah. I haven't been able to get out as much in Australia to do exercise. So that's my excuse anyway. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I've had to I had to change to a more flat thinning colours recently. Well, it, so. it suits you. It it uh, it's very slimming. It looks good. Thanks, thanks, Pete. Yeah, you you're great for my ego. <laughs> good. <laughs> so who who have we got on the show today, Mark? Well, look, we've got the uh, the guys from the UK. Uh, these fellas, we have been talking on and off for twelve months. Uh, let's do something together. Let's do something together. Had some, had some chats actually. It was a one-way conversation, so he wouldn't shut up. But anyway, that's, that's <laughs> I was about to say the same thing. Like, <laughs> <laughs> let's be honest, uh, okay? Come on. The, 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 We're all these friends. Fellas, they, they, let's be clear here. You know uh, me well. <laughs> I'm going I'm to start introducing you, uh, Lee. Lee Payne. Yes, right. Lee, welcome to the show. Look, you have, you have about... 15 seconds of runway here, and that's probably the only words you're going to get in, mate. So, uh, Lee, welcome to the show. <laughs> How are you, mate? Cheers, Mark. I'm all right. Listen, don't worry. I, I'm used to not getting a word in edgeways, so <laughs> I don't expect today to be any different to any other day of my life. <laughs> and uh, Sia, I actually have no idea uh, what your last name is. It's always been Sia, and um, let's roll with that because... Yeah. See ya. How are it's you? like Sting, <laughs> Madonna, you know. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Seal. <laughs> uh, usually, usually they get the name wrong and say Sire or something else, but yeah. <laughs> Hello. I'm very <laughs> happy to be on the show. I'm a massive fan <laughs> of you guys. I, I've got to say it again. Guys, I've been checking you guys, the content that you've been producing for a long, long time, and I, I reached out to to both of you, and you know, you know how much I really like your show. I think you're one of the only shows that deliver real authenticity in terms of the content that you do. It's not just about covering the industry; you you cover it from a from perspective of working people in the industry. Pete is a consultant, and yourself as a SI there, Mark. So, yeah, I'm really happy and chuffed to be on the show. Thanks, mate. It's great to have you. Um, and uh, we can see that uh, Pete's. Got a little bit of Spider-Man action going in, in behind him here. 
Um, just, just any second he's going to jump out the window and <laughs> hang on to that rope. But, uh, <laughs> fellas, let's start off. Let, let's get started. What do we got? We've got um, – we're here to have a chat about uh, – well, broad tech – for you blokes is your consultancy agency yeah is that pitching that right yeah so exactly it. lee do you want to carry on not really because <laughs> <laughs> that, that's about the only thing you're going to say for the rest i'm just going to hear first folks <laughs> <laughs> right i'll start um <laughs> yes yeah, so, <laughs> So uh, Lee and I have actually known each other for a long, long time. We've, we've known each other for probably when we were teenagers. Um, and uh, one day we kind of, uh, we were at different, well, we were at a trade show and I, I was in a different industry. I was working in the audio industry for a long time and Lee was working in the IT industry. And we were both at that time uh, working in different capacities in, in AV. So when I was at the show and I, I saw, I, I recognised that bloke. I saw him and I'm like, what are you doing here at the show? And he said, what are you doing at the here at the show? And then we found ourselves working in AV. And I, on that day, I just remember saying, you know what, we're going we're gonna to work together and we're going to do something together. And probably about a couple of years later, we, we, we made that happen. And, um, you know, we're working with uh, DVI Gear, who are, uh, um, they do uh, signal distribution um, and connectivity, a company based in America. That's uh, so where we started working together. Previous to that, I was working with the guys at SY Electronics in Manchester in the UK. And Lee's been a consultant for a long time in the AV industry, mainly because of his IT background. And uh, he's been involved in AV over IP for a long, long time. Um, so when we kind of finished up our role at DVR Gear, we, we knew it was just it was an obvious step because COVID had hit at that time and we had a different view and different uh, vision of how things could be done um, within AV, especially um, between how vendors work, how distributors work and how SIs and end users engage with, you know, everything with the products, with training, with purchasing, uh, with how they communicate, um, you know, how vendors communicate to the SIs. All of these things we found that there's, there are ways that we, you know, we can definitely make improvements. And uh, so we just, you know, put our ideas together. Um, unfortunately, there was a bit of a delay because um, uh, Lee's father passed away in that time. But um, I kind of carried on, you know, kept plugging away, kept plugging away. And uh, yeah, we've got we've got some interesting stuff that that we you know got going, and we're we're not limited to just the AV industry. We've actually got clients in the, the biotech industry and the construction industry as well. Uh, so yeah, really happy to you know we just recently went to the IC show to so kind of tell you more about that and uh, carry things on. Yeah, no, I saw that. I mean, unfortunately, you know, Mark and I couldn't attend IC this year, uh, but. You guys were there, and you guys had a great presence. I, I have to admit, you. I, I saw a lot of your videos uh, on LinkedIn. Uh, you, you really, you really went in there. You know, sort of, you know, feet first, and you just jumped straight into it. And you were out there interviewing people. You're talking about product, and and I thought you guys covered the show really, really well. What was what was some of the highlights of the show? Lee, no man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know what? To to be honest, on 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 my part, I expected it to be dead. I expected yes. the show to be absolutely like a ghost town. I and I was I I, I was shocked. It, yeah, there were a lot of people like there. Say again, Mark. I, I saw some numbers today, like forty five thousand yeah. people through the doors. So was, that's that's not that bad. That's how it wound up. That's it's it's pretty good. I I probably expected it to be half of that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it wasn't the crazy, the crazy times that you used to see in the past, but that's not really nice anyway, because you've got a lot of tire kickers to be, to be yep. honest. Um, everyone who was there at ISC this year that I spoke to, they were, they were high quality people. They, they had a purpose. They weren't there because they had nothing else to do that afternoon. They went there for a reason. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, so there's the committed well, ones, unlike Pete and I. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'm glad you two weren't there. It, 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 it meant there was some beer left for us. Right. Yeah, yeah. In Mark's case. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I I saw a lot of um lot of companies that that were doing UC that was that was proper, you know really popular. Obviously, you know continuation of a lot of AV over IP stuff I, I saw on there. Um, but yeah, I mean I was I was really 
quietly, um, you know, really impressed with both the quality of the conversations I was having um, and speaking with a lot of different, you know, people on the on the stands, just speaking to them about the solutions that they've got and how they're working. It's, you know, it, it seems like, you know, what I got a sense of is that everyone is, you know, biting at the chump. They're waiting to go because obviously, you know, because of COVID and subsequent delays and logistics and getting components and things have been dying, you know, not dying, but just, you know, not really moving as fast. Just, there was so much kind of, uh, you know, energy for people to, uh, they really wanted to get projects off the ground. They wanted to kind of continue projects that, that they'd s spoken about for a couple of years and not really worked on. So there was a real appetite there. Um, and you sense that you sense that over the certainly the first three days, you know, it was consistent. It wasn't what, you know, it didn't die down that much, especially where we were in, in uh, on our booth. It was, it was quite consistent only on, on Friday that was it, you know, nothing oh. really happening. But yeah, that that was the, that was the, um, for us. We, we didn't have you know much of an expectation, but that's what I took from the show is that there's a massive appetite. You know, people are you know really there um, to you know start things up again. And and I I also saw things that are, you know like in events, digital signage, these these areas you know where it has been dire um, this last couple of years. You know people coming back on they've got some new technologies they've, they've they've been working away they've been doing a lot of work with um like doing strategic partnerships with other vendors as well so they're looking outside of just what they're doing so that that's a you know bright sign and in, in i don't mean the, the company i mean it's a bright sign in a general bright sign. <laughs> yeah um <laughs> although although i did see i did see <laughs> Insert ad here. Insert. <laughs> yeah. I'll be calling that guy from Brightside. <laughs> the people that we had with SDVOE later. Um, was, but, was there a particular product though, or a, a uh, an exhibitor there that really stood out that you you kind of thought, "Wow, that's that's amazing." Um, I think, I think. Um, yeah. And let's because I, I, answer that, that if it's not one of the six that are in your um, yeah. backdrop, that you're answering the with the wrong answer. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, there was there was some interesting. The thing is, it's like it's difficult because we, as consultants, our job is to know and understand a lot of mm -hmm. the technologies and be be in the loop. So we we kind of understood a lot of those things. But I think you know personally. Um, you know, not not counting Thin Labs, not counting Netgear and Tescam and Simon and uh, Ava and uh, SY Electronics, then I'd say the the Matrox uh, solution that that they had up for you know and the and the work that they've been doing um, on the SIMT 2110 that was quite interesting. Mm -hmm. um, Lee, do you want to kind of go into a bit more yeah. detail? Yeah, I mean for sure. Um... Of course, we can't really talk about the FinLab stuff as being the most technically forward thing um, at the show, although I think it was the most unique thing at the show. Mm -hmm. um, Netgear is doing a hell of a lot of good stuff with AV over IP, right? They've they've really been an advocate for AV over IP. And I think I think AV over IP now has, has just turned into AV. It's just, mm -hmm. it's what it is. It goes over IP right now. Yeah, Pe yeah. people have accepted that. Uh -huh. It took. It was a long uphill battle for people to to understand and accept the fact that you know this this witchcraft inside these wires isn't going to kill me. Uh -huh. It's going to make my life easier. It's going to make my client's life better. Well, Net Net um, Netgear have done such a great <clears throat> job of helping that along the way, haven't they? Yeah, you know, they they, they really are the recognised uh, networking <clears throat> brand for for AV over IP. Yes, that's for sure. They've done they've done more than any of the vendors are actually making the endpoints of that. I will yeah. I, I will put it out there right now and say that is one hundred percent. But what um what what Sia was saying about about Matrox with their uh, their IPMX product, I can't remember the name of their product itself, but it's it's their implementation of IPMX. They're doing. Again, they're doing a great job with that. Uh, they're the only ones making any noise about IPMX as a as a future standard. Um, and I think I think that's got a lot a lot of legs. That's the thing mm -hmm. that really I I'm I'm looking forward to seeing the future IPMX. Okay. Just just back on Netgear, Lee. I mean, Netgear was born 
out of a, like a residential product, right? Yeah. That's kind of where they sort of found a niche for themselves all, all those years ago. Now, obviously, the company has matured. They're, they're looking at corporate solutions. Do you think that in a corporate environment, do you think there's still a stigma around the Netgear name? Because that's, I mean, that's where it came from. I'm not saying that's where it is today, but that's that was its origins, right? Pete, the, re- the reason I was almost laughing there is is 100. percent I I came yeah. I came from enterprise IT. Mm. Right? I worked in data centers. If you had come mm. up to me and said, "Put this Netgear switch in your data center," I would have, I would have mm-hmm. laughed you out the door. Yeah, 100. percent When I first started talking to the Netgear guys, it was, do I have to? Mm. Right. Um, but it very quickly became apparent that these guys know what the hell they're doing. Yeah. Actually, they and actually do know what they're doing. The real challenge with that, that though, Lee, is that um, there's still a lot of AV manufacturers, you know, that are writing drivers or writing um, APIs, and they're still writing with, you know, into the Cisco SG300s, SG350s, and and that's kind of it. There's it's, the, it's almost like the, the manufacturers haven't quite got on board with Netgear as well, and they could probably, you know, pull their finger out and do that, I guess. Oh, I would agree with that. Um, and there are there are reasons, of course, you know, Cisco, well, if you give me a quarter of Cisco's mar- marketing budget, then we could all retire for a very long mm. time. You, you know what yeah. I mean? Part, part of it's, um, you know, brand stickiness with, uh, mm-hmm. it's the name. If, if the the vendor of the endpoint starts talking about other switches that aren't Cisco, then they risk losing their sale as well. So yet yeah, 100% you've still yeah. got you've still got a stigma attached to the, to the Netgear get Netgear name. There was a guy very very good friend actually of both of us. Um he's he's forgotten more about IT and networking than I will ever know. Mm. Um and I was talking to him about Netgear and he he just started laughing. Honestly. And mm. it's so it's it's only when you really get those the stories and uh, get to understand the projects that these guys work on that you really appreciate um, uh, the products that they've got, the skill set that they've got, the people that they've got there are are second mm-hmm. to none, right? Yeah. Um, it's not all about um, how many nanoseconds your switching time of your chip in your Ujimi flip. Is going to be although I think they they're they're all pretty much based on the same chips anyway, so they've got the same number of nanoseconds. But it's it's about it's about the people, it's about the support you're going to get, it's about the pre-sale support, the after-sale support. I don't know if you've well, you probably have tried working with Cisco. Mm. Oh Good yeah, luck. Good luck, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? yeah. Um, yeah. If you work with Netgear, you've you you've got the SE's mobile number, and you and you can yeah. phone him at the weekend, and uh-huh. he'll pick you up and he'll help you out. Yeah, I have to say their commitment to, to AV and what they've done in terms of support, especially working side by side with the vendors has been, you know, their approach has been exactly the type of, for someone that's outside of AV, they've approached it in exactly the right way. They've they've understood the tone that you need to be successful in this industry. And that is to be humble and provide a lot of support and a lot of education. And they've done that. And they've done that through partnerships. They've done that. They've developed their, what they've developed today and the the kind of uh, uh, alliances that they've created today is really several years of uh, a lot of hard work and effort by people like Laura, um, you know, Mm -hmm. Richard Yonker and all of their teams that, you know, various teams in the States and and across uh, MIA as well. Mm. So, so let's. Um, I just want to unpack this. Uh, what seems to be very obvious, um, AV over uh, IPOE, uh, is is it just as it says on the box, or is there is there some stuff that you know? Wh- well, so where are you going with this um, brand that you guys have created, and, uh, and and what don't we know about it? You know, what do you, what do we need to see and understand about this that we're not seeing? Well, we didn't slip it past you, did we, Mark? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> was it so obvious? <laughs> <laughs> good, good job. That's why you get paid the big bucks. Well, I'm paid the big bucks, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, so 
as I was saying earlier, AV over IP, it's it's just the norm now, right? It's it's uh -huh. it's managed to become the norm, especially in the corporate environment, right? I mean, Pete, you're doing this kind of stuff day in day out. I I would I would say it depends where you are, Lee. Right, I, and I I, yeah. I I agree with you, but in so like to give you an example, in Australia we were doing AV over IP projects in 2015, right? Seven years ago we were starting to do AV over IP. I moved to New York in January 2020, and I've been here nearly two and a half years now and we haven't had a client that has gone with an av over ip solution and that's not because obviously we haven't tried to push it because i believe in that solution it's just i think the way that the market is here right here which is in my opinion behind really the rest of the world <laughs> which is a, which no, is a little sad no no offense to our to our to our cousins across the pond there, but um, that's ten. That tends to be uh, that they lag behind ten years on everything. Yeah, you know, yeah. including their carpets, right? Their carpets. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I I think I I do I I do think I do think that a lot of that has to do with especially the New York market, and I'm only I'm talking specifically about New York. I'm not maybe other parts of the US are different. <laughs> But the New York market is a very traditional market, and there are the things done in very different ways. Construction, for example, probably ninety-five percent, if not higher, of construction in Manhattan is unionized, right? Like, but if you have a look at around the world and other parts, it's like it's non-union, right? So there's all these kinds of, you know, they, they they when I ask people why are you doing it like this, and they come back to me and they say. That's the way we've always done it. Always. And I just, <laughs> I just please, please. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I think it's, it, it's, it's a mindset. It, it's, it's, it's a very traditional market here. People don't like change, all these kinds of things sort of come, come into it. And so we're not seeing it here, but I do agree with your statement, Lee. It is, it's not even the way of the future. It, 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 it we, because we've been doing yeah. it for seven years. It's yeah. now. It's here. It, it, it should be rolled out on every project. I, I, in most projects, most instances, it, you know, it has uh, a lot of benefits. I agree. Horses for courses. It's not every project. Mm -hmm. It's not going to fit every single thing. Correct. Correct. Yeah. But it's going to fit a lot of stuff right now. It's getting you know? really close yes. now. You know, we, we, um. We're just about everything we're doing now is is AV over IP. There's very little HD based T um, mm -hmm. uh, when it when there's multiple endpoints. Um, yeah, um, if it's just point to point, sure. Yeah, but I tell you what, the, the price point on some of the AV over IP stuff and the reliability is just getting too hard to ignore. You know, you sit there and go, oh, now I just want flexibility. Nothing offers it like AV over IP. So. Um, apart from the fact that there's you, there's still some what? brands you can get <laughs> in AV over IP, not many, but there's a few. <laughs> yeah. Um, whereas bugger all HD based T, and certainly in area, that's for sure. Thir Thirty nine weeks on HD based, a lot of HD based T products over here. Thirty nine weeks to to yep. get hold of the product. Yeah. Maybe you need to try out SY Electronics. They've held the hell of us. I, it, but once again, but, but this is <laughs> the thing. Well, I, I, how many times it, can we say the brands that are behind yeah. you in this whole, this whole video? <laughs> but but it, it comes back to a lot of the time, see it comes back to the client and the client goes, This is my standard, this is what we use. Now their hand at the moment is starting to be forced because you know, I mean, yeah. New York, Crestron is just up the road. They've got a strong presence here. 39 weeks for touch panels, yeah. uh, you know, time. transmitters, receivers, all those kinds of things. It's now our clients are like going, maybe we need to look for a different solution. So maybe this is the turning point for them where they do turn around and finally go AV over IP, or maybe they do look at another brand or or whatever it may be, because they're being forced. Otherwise, they'd probably just be continuing down the same road for, for many years to come. It's exactly what we're seeing happen, right? That is exactly yeah. what we're seeing happen. 
Yeah, that's what I've seen happening too here. I, I just, I think that this is a funny thing I've said about this whole opportunity for all these manufacturers. You know, there's there's those couple there's a couple of brands in the world that are you know in here over here it's fifty nearly fifty weeks I think Pete for a lot of that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we've got a job that has been holding on, holding on, holding on. And mm-hmm. I think we're at nine months, and they've they've finally just gone. You know what? What else you got? You know, mm-hmm. and if manufacturers really just, I just think manufacturers just honed in. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of these big brands that are right for the picking that can't supply, that some of the smaller brands can supply. And um, the the challenge is, is their marketing budget probably doesn't stretch that far to really to really smash them. But yeah, you know, the opportunity is there right now. You know, to to really hit home on this on the supply issue. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. I think if they put some of their um, engineering budget, because what what's what some companies are doing is actually they're re-engineering their products um, mm-hmm. with with components that they can get mm. um, to 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 meet to, to be able to meet that demand. But that's seventy three weeks away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if yeah. they could put some of that into their marketing budget, although then again to I just talked a load of crap there because it's the companies that <laughs> that yeah. have got that big engineering budget and want to stay sticky that are doing that. It's yeah, all right, cut that bit out. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's about our show, Lee. There are no edits. <laughs> There's a, zero edits. <laughs> what if I stand up and do a Mooney? Yeah. Uh, that's, look, look, we, we're all about attracting new viewers, so uh, that might that may assist our outreach. Going to be if you do a moon, mate. Don't you worry. Just... <laughs> he did what? <laughs> yeah. Well, interesting that uh, look. If we're going to talk about um, some of the brands behind you, the the guys that have to be. Um, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Going through relatively unscathed in the whole chipset would be Simon, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I mean, they they play a massive uh, in, in instrumental role in, in what we're talking about, AVL or IPOE, um, because you know that's essentially that their whole pitch is completely aligned with what we're trying to get out there and, and get more kind of attention on. Because structured cabling and what they're doing, they're talking about, um, you know, the importance of how we can eventually get into a situation of smart buildings and even further smart cities. Um, and if you look at a lot of their material the way what they're talking about the advantage points of not you can you know run cat cables everywhere so you don't need to have electrical um lines everywhere that's going to save you lots of uh, money it's going to you know reduce your carbon footprint and it's also going to be you know going back to what you were saying pete about um you know you know the flexibility of AVR IP with a firmware update. You can essentially completely change the you know way of the functionality of a product uh, with a firmware update, and that's something you can't do with with kind of fixed format you know black boxes essentially. So you know there's so many advantages of using both AVR IP and then using PoE um, because you're going to you know it's reducing costs and a, a normal SI can actually go and you know, lay down those cat cables. They don't need to, um, you know, it's going to be really expensive to run those electric uh, cables. I think we've got one guy that we work with closely. He was telling us uh, for, he does a lot of universities, uh, uh, a Sparky electrician, he he does that. And he says it costs 250 pounds every plug that they put in. Mm -hmm. And then you start adding those plugs up. And then we're looking at the power consumption of a lot of uh, the products. You know, it becomes, uh, you know, let's say like the FinLab solution, which is an all-in-one POE display up to 55 inches with with touch. Um, You know, it runs at 25%. Um, less power than a normal desktop and, and, and monitor, you know, so you're, you're making, you know, significant savings of the power of the 75% power, yeah. less. Yeah. Sorry. Right. It, it, it's, it, that's a big difference. That's yeah. a massive difference. And then when you look, when you want to scale up that solution and you start to, and we start talking about what else can we integrate into that? You know, everything is now on, uh, you know, on POE, whether that's, um, you know, HVAC and, uh, you know, you start including LED lighting, you start, you know, going into uh, IoT devices. There's so many other things that kind of go, can go into this and you're scaling up and you can go, well, actually, I can specify an entire project completely based on um, POE. And 
and using ABL via IP is, you know, uh, kind of distribution for that is, makes it a lot easier because you're centralizing everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah and I, 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 I've worked very closely with the guys at, at Simon in Australia over the years, and they are one of the few cabling vendors that actually get it. You know, they understand. Yeah. Um, I remember having many conversations with them about the opportunities in the AV market. And they, because like the, their competitors, I mean, they're competing against some very large companies, you know, your Comscopes of the world and, and, and so on. And they were looking for an avenue. How do we, how do we have a point of difference here? And what, what they did is they went, they realized that there was a big opportunity in the AV market and, you know, with HD base T and now AV over IP and everything. So they, they targeted these AV contractors and say, like, okay, we're going to train you guys up. We're going to tell you the importance of, of all this, uh, you know, how the cable, how cabling works, why it's important to install it properly, termination techniques, all those kinds of things. And they did a fantastic job in that area of, of educating them. And they've, once again, they built this trust and rapport with them and they understand, you know, not just smart buildings, but they understand smart workplaces. They understand the interconnectivity, like you're talking about, see, with whether it's, you know, POE lighting, um, you know, it could be, sensors uh, analytical sensors on the ceiling it could be air quality monitors all these devices these days that go into a workplace a smart workplace a digital intelligent workplace all reside on the network they all sit on this cabling infrastructure and that's the thing if you don't get that cabling infrastructure right and you're putting in shitty cable or your people aren't educated and they, they're doing a poor installation it doesn't matter how expensive this equipment is that you're plugging into it it ain't going to work or it's not going to perform at the, you know, at the, or you're not going to get the desired results. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, and I think, you know, just to kind of add to that, I think it's, it's what, what you said is where, where they get it. it. It's almost like what we're trying to do at Broadtech is work with companies to make them understand then how to get it you know by using technology so it's not just about the technology that you use it's, it's almost like a different mindset and and processes you know how you can improve your internal process to to take advantage of all the technologies that are out there to reduce your cost to reduce your carbon footprint to um, streamline your workflow there are so many ways and so many advantages that you you know it's like technology is just one part of it but the way that you think about technology and how it's used in the workplace at home in any kind of environment that it's going to go into that's just you know because that's really the user experience that's really important uh -huh. you know you've got to really understand how this uh, you know site is going to be used or how this environment is going to be used so that we create the technology fitting for that not just going oh i can do this so and it's going to oh, your budget is that much let me spend your budget it's not about uh -huh. that it's but you know you know use the right technology for the right purposes you know what we're trying to do is do that and not to lose on performance you know you're not going to lose on performance when, when you're using certain certain ranges of, of products it's, it's not a, a perception is wrong you know perception of thinking oh if if it doesn't you know oh that one's got you know massive price tag it must be better not necessarily mm. yeah I, I i was down at um i was down at a Roadshow today, down in beautiful Bruce Vegas, and uh, and uh, re, re, quick quick side digression: the, the two 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 vendors randomly booked. Uh, Pete, you'll know this: the Combsley Hotel um, in in Brisbane yes. at Morningside. Then uh, uh -huh. the, the uh -huh. same place on the that same was my day. Local. Mate, I lived I lived on that street. I was I was like, it was. It was a bit tough because it was downhill on the way to the pub, but you had to walk back uphill uh, at the end of the night, you know. But I know the Combsley. I do know yeah. that because today when I was ordering, a, I was just ordering a coffee, um, not a whiskey, <laughs> but uh, I did see a photo of you on the wall with uh, do not let this guy in. So Exactly, uh, I figured, exactly. I figured that was it. But, That's um, why I'm here. But, but anyway. That's why I'm here. <laughs> she got chased out of town. Um, I, I noticed today, and and it was a really good. Um, it's just a, it's actually just a slap in the face. It was is what it was. Was it, there was a product that is now focused. Uh, I'm trying to think. It's blue wire, something like that, right? Not not blue stream. Um, blue wire, which is a hospitality audio product. Um, and that 
they pitched it as like a, a Sonos, a, a commercial Sonos. Yeah. Not blue sound. Um, Not blue sound. Copy blue sound. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I and think that they do a they do a commit like a sort of a Sonos style product. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and and standing there, and, and all their speakers uh, are all PoE. You know, everything's mm-hmm. everything's PoE. There was the sitting there. The whole thing was like, it's actually now, and and price point was actually fair and reasonable. You're sitting there going, okay, it's it's here's a slap in the face. Here it is. It's right here. It's right here in front of us. You know, so um, if you're going to be a, a a front runner in uh, in technology, we've sadly as it is that as as slow as we potentially are, maybe. America's ten years behind us, but um, it's it's right here and and it's there for the taking. But what's interesting though, Mark, when when I made that comment about New York being behind as far as AV over IP, on the flip side, every medium sized meeting room we've got Dante microphones and Dante speakers going in. So it's like, okay, you're adopting that. Why aren't you adopting the AV over IP for video transportation? Which it, it just makes no sense. So we kind of have this hybrid: half of the AV is on the network, and the other half isn't on the network. The we're okay yeah. with audio, but we're not put the video. And you're like, my God! But I, I agree. Like we, we, we'll put in, as I said, Dante ceiling microphones. You know, whatever, what, whatever brand is got the best solution for that environment uh, but also the uh, poe uh, speakers dante poe speakers because i don't need an amplifier and i'm not putting big sound in these rooms i just need something you know and uh, to, to make sure i've got good coverage and i don't need another box somewhere in a credenza or behind a display or trying to conceal that so the the benefits in my opinion of putting devices on the network one i can centralize a lot of this stuff two I just I just have less boxes. I just really I have less boxes. I'm not trying to house racks inside, you know, as inside these rooms under put equipment under a table or behind a display, right? So it actually becomes a, a neater, easier, cleaner solution overall. Yeah, hundred percent. Listen, does. Yep. they will come around to it. I mean, you're you're surprised that they're only they're putting the A bit of um, AV yeah. over P. On, but you know what? It's been around a hell of a lot more, t- a lot longer than the V part. Uh, C- Sia sure. was in audio yeah. um, for many, many yeah. years. He he was in audio when it was uh-huh. when Dante was yeah. just happening. So I don't yeah. know. I'm going to let yeah. you talk now, Sia. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, <laughs> what, 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 what did I did? Finish my sentence. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if, if we take a look at what Ordinate, Ordinate did, they took um, a bunch of people that were completely not. IT literate and explain to them the benefits of, you know, using a network and, Mm -hmm. you know, and it, you know, it took a while, but, you know, we can learn a lot from, you know, someone that's created a technology and, and, you know, the, the phases that they've gone through in order to get engagement in order to create demand in order to get uh, advocates for that technology um, and, you know, looking at that journey and we can apply that to other people that have got technologies that want to, they, they might want to fast track that technology mm-hmm. into, into the marketplace so, so that they can make advocates quicker to, so that the market can accept that. And, you know, part of that is, you know, look at what the guys have done at Netgear, you know, both for um, VoIP as well as what they're doing with AV over IP. You know, they're doing mm-hmm. the same thing. It's, it all starts with education. It mm-hmm. starts, you know, f- from that point and then, you know, providing really good support, you know, and, and you know, and I think, you know, there's so much to learn from that. And then you can, you know, take all of that and apply it in in any different aspect for, for those technologies. So if you've got, whether it's proprietary technology or open source technology, I- ideally there's a model to follow. You know, and the model is to really understand the market, uh, educate the market, support the market, and just be consistent in terms of everything that you're doing, whether the, the way that you communicate is really, really important. And most of the times, the way a lot of, um, we find anyway, the traditional kind of monolithic vendors, they, they're, they're broadcasting, right? They're just telling everyone, you know, check this out, check this out. Really, what we really want to be able to do is go, let's look at some real life scenarios and have those guys that are really using this stuff to do the advocating for us, because there's not a better way to find an affinity towards that. than let's say how Ordinate did it 
find another, you know, so, someone that's in the industry that's really re revered in, in the audio uh, engineering industry, you know, advocate this solution for us. And similarly, they go to other studios and studios start working it in that way. And it slowly starts expanding beyond that. Uh, you know, you know, there, there's a trend that's being set, uh, set. And that's essentially, you know, what you've got to do is learn from that and apply it to to any technology that you're doing. And a lot of what we're doing when we say about, you yeah, know, what we what we provide as broad tech and digital transformation is that learning using data driven insights, learn from that and apply new strategies and how you can, you know, apply these strategies for yourself, whether you're a, a vendor, whether you're a, it doesn't matter what kind of company you are, it, it can be useful. Mm hmm. That's because they're Australians, mate. That's probably half the. Um... <laughs> it's true. <laughs> yeah, it's a shame about their share price right now. Like, yeah. Last year I was a millionaire. This week I'm broke. But anyway, it's. Uh... <laughs> it's true, but yeah, I mean, the, the whole way this this particular um, opportunity came about is because one of our clients, Thin Labs, uh, they're an American firm that that specialised on PoE technology, in particular, all-in-one uh, displays that run on um, PoE. So, you know, they approached us about wanting to do something and we we were in discussions and we kind of introduced them uh, to Netgear and they, we started th this kind of discussion because our whole way of thinking, what we want to do is we want to encourage um, vendors to work together to certify one another's products because we've got a vision of making in streamlining the whole way uh, as i mentioned at the start way, way the kind of av industry works in a sense so um the way um, vendors communicate their product with with their si's and or end users uh the way the si's uh, purchase these products through their distributors the way the work between the distributors and the, and the vendors work we want to kind of you know make those changes and part of that is going right if we have more vendors working together certifying one another's products knowing that it's going to work out of the box because you're giving a level of confidence to the end user or the reseller si or whatever um and we're essentially we're, we're solutioning um something i mean something mm. that you do there mark with a lot of your videos you're, you're solutioning that thing and you've got authenticity mm. when you've got authenticity when you, you're you're doing that because you're a working si your company does this and it's like something that w that's worked for you you know that you know this is what i use this is how i do it and i've found success doing it this way and people find you know that they, they can kind of um you know you find a uh, affinity with that message and then if we can you, you, Go you're going through the hard yards, and this is um, this is the part of it, right? You go through the hard yards. You work out what doesn't work together, what does work together, what we'll never do again, you know. Like um, and and you know, this would probably be okay with a couple of firmware updates, but right now it's not working. So you you find the the product mix that's that's actually working together, and that's that's worth something, right? That's that's actually there's a bloody lot of work in that. Yeah, yeah. But a lot and, of people keep those cards close to the a lot of people keep those cards close to the chest unfortunately though mark it's like you know they they've to come up with this solution it's like oh i'm not going to share it with anyone and but that, that's why i you know with the, the those videos that you create you know you're sharing that knowledge with others you know you're saying hey look we sure we've made some mistakes or we thought this was going to work it didn't work but this is a good solution and and i think it's important if we all sort of work together and share that knowledge we're going to have better overall solutions for our clients at the end of the day exactly yeah, and, yeah, like, that's, w yeah. when vendors work in that way we don't mean just the tertiary level of oh i'm going to certify this works and we mean mm. that you know getting deeper than just exchanging apis we mean sometimes that we might have to do a bit more work to make mm -hmm. sure out of the box this works with that solution and with these other sets of solutions that that we're kind of putting together and then that gives real confidence and then the next stage of that is if we can then move that in and create demand for the for that solution and move that to one point of sale so work that through one distributor because then you've got one person to contact from uh si or, or end user point of view and you know maybe on that point you know that distributors working with all of these different vendors you know the, the questions will be shot off to those individual things but from a user experience point of view what we're tr doing is streamlining it we're going here's a solution you can scale this up or scale this down however you want to fit the particular project that you want to or use it for uh, we know out of the box all of these 
vendors for this solution have you know certifies one or another's products and they know that they're going to work out of the box with with you know for this application and you can buy everything from one from this place you know it's just the whole idea of having you know if i like this solution or what you're saying mark or what you you you're doing you've gone out there and tried this cable company and then you've gone out there and you've tried this kind of uh, av distribution company and this display company and you found oh you know it doesn't work here if i'm looking at 4k 6444 and i've got i've got you know artifacts here and all, you know, whatever the situation sure. is that there, there yeah. are problems that you've worked, long, yeah. Yeah, you, you've worked <laughs> through and you've done all that thing as in imagine the amount of time and no one's paying mm -hmm. you for that and you, you've gone yeah. and done that mm. but that really is the job for all of these vendors stop thinking about their part of the solution and thinking about yeah. the whole end-to-end -end solution I, and the role that they play in that yeah and the reason why that's so important Sia, in our industry is because if you look at the IT industry, and, and you know, Lee, you know, I'm sure you're going to agree with this. It, it's based on standards, right? It's based on standards. So I know that I can buy a Dell computer and I can plug it into a Cisco switch or a Netgear switch, and, a, <laughs> and it's going to work. It's going to work, right? Because it's all based on standards. And the the AV industry, unfortunately, has been on a whole a proprietary based industry for all these years, and it's like. Oh, our product works with our other product over here. They work perfectly, but you try and get that working with a competitor's product. Good luck, right? Even though it uses the same chipset, you know, good luck. You you may get well, some H functionality, HD based T, -based -T or, uh, all the these. <laughs> exactly, and that's that's why it's important to to create, like you said, see, create these solutions because because we are still somewhat. We're moving in the right direction, but we're still somewhat in this proprietary state where everyone is trying to create, you know, like they're trying to put a fence around their solutions and trying to get you get the clients buying their complete product suite, which I think is totally the wrong solution. Uh, but that's what they're trying to do. And I think by solutioning all these these things, it 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 provides people with a level of comfort that, if I use this camera, if I use this this switch, if I use this transmitter, all these things are going to work together. Because at the moment, there is no guarantee that any of this is going to work together. Yeah, it's a little bit like um, we could probably take a leaf out of the book of the software world with APIs. You know, you, you look at. Um, I think the classic one, uh, anyone who's in business using zero accounting software, right? Uh -huh. You know, and uh -huh. just it's you, you go and look at the list of APIs, anything that plugs into zero and and feeds data across, and it's just like, and the, yeah, if it's got to go through a third party or something to to make it happen through the likes of Zapier or whatever, ah, uh, yeah, you're kind of getting half the solution. Where, but if it's a direct plug in, it just seems to work, uh -huh. you know, and and people go there. They go and use the product, the zero product, because things plug into it, and they can mm -hmm. plug things into it to what they need. And certainly in the in the AV industry, we, I think that sort of hits home to to what you said, Pete. Is like it's it's the rising tide lifts all ships. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we could just everything would just become a little, little bit more seamless. I don't think it's mm -hmm. any secret, though. You know, the this this whole walled garden approach. It's uh, mm -hmm. it's it's no accident, is it? It's mm -hmm. it's pr protectionism, yep. Um, which you you can understand from a business point of view, mm -hmm. but the AV industry and people in the AV industry pride themselves on innovation, being innovative, and that kind of protectionism it stifles innovation. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't, I'm I'm not comfortable with that. I, and and that this even came down like with HD based T as an example. This even came down to. Really, if you want to guarantee performance here, you've got to use a shielded cable. You've got to use a, you know, FUTP cable at a minimum. Oh, and by the way, it's got to be CAT 6A, right? Because we need 10 gig. And so suddenly we're designing solutions where we've got UTP cabling for everything else. Oh, for the AV, I need I need a shielded solution. And you're just like, this is madness. This is madness. Yeah. And it's because the product wasn't engineered correctly in the first place is the only reason why I need a shielded cable. Yeah, but l let's, not, let, let's not beat down on v Valens and HD I, Base D too much. There are other there are other pseudo standards out there where yeah. the uh, vendors of at least one, one in particular I'm thinking of, right, mm -hmm. they openly say 
interoperability. No, we don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, they and who, who's that, Lee? Who's that? Who, who, are you, who are you referring to? IDK. Okay, there you go. Right. No, I think there's many. It's not just IDK. I think um, there's, there's, there's a number of other you know, manufacturers that are the same, same thing. Well, so with, within the SDVOE pseudo standard, right. okay, got it, got it. I'm yep. talking about IDK right. stands yep. out there mm -hmm. to me as they okay. They don't all want to play nicely with each other, yeah, yeah. but they yeah. don't come out and say we ain't going to do that. Except yeah. IDK, they put their head above the parapet and more, more power yeah. to them. They're yeah, they they proud of it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. but, but even when we, you know even when we are talking about these proprietary types of solutions you know my, my point is that you can have a proprietary technology but you still you're still only part of the solution unless you start mm -hmm. playing nice with someone so even within the stvoe standard right they're getting more and more vendors that are doing more and more different kind of uh solutions to do that so you've got a pantech that are doing these these cards and then that kind of open th opens things up and you know and the whole idea is that you know you really need to start at some point start working with others because as a vendor you cannot you cannot um manufacture everything for a complete end-to-end -end solution you're not mm -hmm. going to do a display right you're not going to yeah. do a source probably mm -hmm. you're really going to stick in your lane if you're going to do you know if you're doing signal distribution that's what you're going to do is signal distribution yeah. and you might kind of branch out a little bit but you're not going to completed solution and that's where you're going to need to work even within that proprietary technology you're going to need to work with other vendors that are doing that are specializing in doing you know other other bits and pieces and i, I think that the vision really needs to go beyond of going no we're not going to work with anyone else no we're not going to we're not interested in making our our solution interoperable with it, it needs to, even within that even if you're talking about a proprietary um, technology you still need to be open to having strategic relationships with other vendors that are either tied in or are doing uh, you know similar technology because ultimately it is all about providing an end-to-end -end solution and that's what's going to make it easier for the for the customers and end users and the SIs to go oh okay I'm going to go and I, I'm going to like if we want to go and say I want to make a complete SDVOE um, you know project everything is SDVOE you I can think, do um, that didn't uh, just just to highlight a product, didn't Crestron do that with um, was it NEC? Was it NEC did a like, NVX um, sort of decoder that slots straight into the into the panel? Well, they're doing uh, so. What's happening now? What what we're seeing at least is uh, the trend in the display uh, companies is to have an SDM slot. Then mm -hmm. you can be integrated with anything you like. You just need another mm -hmm. company to make the SDM module of yeah. the right, of the right yeah. standard. So yeah, mm -hmm. maybe that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. Panasonic, they've got a big, big old wheel of SDM modules that they've uh, put put together. Um, uh, shout out to Felix Kleisen for doing that. Um, and there, you know what? It's it, it's really getting there. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, there. There is a lot of availability. There's stuff from CM mentioned. A Pantac, they're doing some amazing stuff. They're, they're, they're doing like a big selection. But you've got Bird Dog doing their own ones. You've got mm. other stuff I can't remember off the, off the top of my head. Um, there's there's a big old collection. Um, so that's going to be part of the, let's say, the boxless end-to-end -end mm. solution. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. So, gents, one, one thing I'm um, interested to know, to unpack a little bit is, uh, and this is lack of product information, product knowledge on my own behalf, is where does Ava fit into this? Where, you know, they're, I'm trying to think of what products they have got that is is kind of PoE. Uh, IP IP PoE cameras, uh, they they do. So um, so what, what this whole kind of uh, AV of IP PoE, we kind of uh, coined it around uh, PoE meeting room. And, um, you know, using, th you know, so you've got thin labs as the displays and, and an all-in-one uh, computer. Uh, Net Netgear obviously provides the uh, network switch. You've got Simon providing the structured cabling. Tascam, they're providing the Dante-enabled uh, uh, encoder-decoder for the, for the audio. Um, Ava have got a lot of um, different solutions, but the, in particular, there are two lines that work well with the thin labs products because thin labs also do many medical PCs for medical carts. So, uh, and Ava have also got a medical uh, camera 
uh, a device that, that they can also do, use that's also running on PoE. Uh, so that's quite an interesting solution. And, and again, it's like you know, there's there's that synergy between the two. Uh, and you know, with that, with their um, IP cameras that they've got, it's, you know, we, we had it on on the stand there. Uh, they've also got a really interesting. Um, uh, relationship with both Shure and Sennheiser using that new technology. Have you seen that, uh, Lee? Yeah, yeah. So um, it's uh, Shure's MX8910, I think it's, or whatever it mm -hmm. was. And uh, yeah. Sennheiser's uh, Team Connect ceiling mics, mm -hmm. similar products, different techs. Mm. But Ava's partnered with both of them um, for their tracking. So mm -hmm. for the camera tracking, um, it. Interesting. The, the mics and the software sitting behind them tells the camera which way to point. Basically, so tracking by audio, yeah. Tracking yeah. by audio. And then, yeah, uh, that's an interesting one because we we haven't had a we, we've tested a lot of products over the last twelve months and and um, yeah, from a we had a particular client that really just wanted to track by audio, um, and that that's pretty bloody hard, especially at any sort of distance. Um, yeah. Yeah, with not a great lot of success, to be honest. You know, there, there, there's a few products that say they do it, but yeah. So this will be interesting to see where this goes with Ava and and, um, and certainly in Shaw and, and Sennheiser. So I'm, I'm definitely interested to watch that one. So I had a demo at ISC on the uh, Sennheiser stand. I didn't make it over to the Shaw stand. Uh, I didn't, so I didn't see see what if they were doing anything over there. All we had to do was be there, Pete. Mate. I know. I know. Well, there's Infocom just around the corner. <laughs> it is? What's that? Three weeks away, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's like 6th of June, I think it is. At, uh, yeah, so about three three weeks away now. It won't Flying be anything as good as ISC, though. I know. I love ISC. No, I, 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 oh, you won't be there. <laughs> yeah, because you won't be. I was about to ask. Hey, is this, 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 uh, this is just Broadtech make an appearance there at a stand? <laughs> Not this year. Not this year. No. Uh, maybe, I, might, I, might, I might be appearing dancing on one of the stands. So. That's what I do as a hobby. <laughs> <laughs> I, think a stand, I think a stand got shut down for that a couple of years ago. Didn't it? Exactly. Remember that robot? That robot dancing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the, that was the last was show. That? It was a. It was a day uh, one, one of the. Really moving the hips. Day two, it was just going. Up and down the pole, it was, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah the pole dancing robot. Yeah, yeah, the got a lot of attention. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, gents, look, I um, we might wrap it up because we could talk all day, and and we often do. Um, <laughs> anything else? Any, anything else you blokes want to cover before I pour myself another whiskey? Yeah, I've, See, I've, 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 I've got, got, I've got, got to talk some more. Hang on, I've hang forgot, on, hang I've on. Been, the, the last bit that I forgot was um, SY Electronics on the roll that they play. <laughs> mm -hmm. So they, they're uh, obviously their uh, connectivity and uh, distribution. They've got a product called the Wizard. Um, yeah, and that's, that's essentially what we use to do the, um, you know, to, to switch the uh, content um, between the display. Um, well, we had two different displays between the displays, but also they've got a um, POE. They're coming out with a POE um, control uh, keypad. So that, that's some, something that's quite interesting. With I think what's, what's really cool about that, actually, is it's um, <clears throat> for, the, for the smaller projects especially, um, you program the keypad itself rather than having to have a control processor. Uh, yeah. So on, on, on the smaller type yeah. projects, it works out really, uh, it, it, it's easy. Yeah, It's easy and it's, mm -hmm. I'm not going to call it cheap because it's not cheap, it's cost effective though. Mm -hmm. Nothing's cheap, certainly not today's world. Definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why. Well, I, hopefully uh, they're in, uh, do you know if they're going to be at Infocom? No, they're they're not in, they're not in the store. They're a, a they're company not, based okay. in Manchester. Um, they're still they're still developing, but hopefully you they know, won't we, let them out of Manchester yeah, or out of Europe. I don't think the, there's a visa for to get into the states. Because so, okay. I, I haven't come across S Y. Um, Pete, have you come across S Y at this point? No, no, I haven't. No. So I don't think so, they're in Australia at this point yet. Yeah, they're they're, they're very well known because uh, they're actually an engineering company originally. Um, they're well known for their their MD is a guy called Sirius Yazdanian, and his um, 
uh, his background is a, is a electrical engineer and he actually designs a lot of the solutions and works with his contract manufacturers. And a lot of the solutions that you see out in the wider OEM market are originally designed by him that get taken on by the contract manufacturer uh, and get rolled out to some of the other vendors. Um, yeah, that's that's his kind of uh, background. And they've, they've gotten, uh, you know, like a good reputation here in the UK as being a best kept secret, especially when, you know, from an SI that, that are doing those projects that you need to come in, uh, you know, have reliable equipment that's cost effective. Um, they're the ones that they go to where you're, you know, you would otherwise maybe specify an Extron, um, but you don't need any of those fancy features that you probably aren't going to use most of the time, but you need the reliability and you need, you know, some of the functionalities, you know, these guys are the other ones. They've, they've done a lot of firsts. Um, they do a lot of uh, range of HG base C, really thin uh, ex, uh, extenders that they've got, HG base C. Now they've got a whole new line of Excalibur, they're calling Excalibur technology. That That's, uh, you know, really, I mean, you should you should check them out. They, they do some interesting stuff. Hmm. Opportunity for a uh, manufacturer and uh, distributor in Australia. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can see that they got the Man City Blue uh, for their logo. That's, yeah, that's but I, and the, the, their equipment is in both. I, I, I have to say this: their equipment is in both Old Trafford as well as. Um, the oh Etihad no! Stadium. He's just, so they they he stay just in killed the, it for me. Uh, but they are actually very close to um, Old Trafford, where the, where their uh, facilities are. <laughs> Interesting, gents. Uh, just just while I wrap it up, what's your out of your? Um, out of your six uh, brands there, what is maybe one of the most unique products out, out of there that y- you think has just got some really good legs? Oh, it's got to be the thin laps uh, because there's nothing yeah. like it on, on the market. Um, yeah. You can't. I mean, one one of the great things about this is that uh, we've kind of tested it with the guys at Thin Labs as well as um, sent some demo units to to um, uh, Netgear. We've been able to get three of these. Uh, I think we were using the 32 inch displays. Three of them running on uh, on uh, Netgear network switch on a single um, port. On a single so, port, yeah. Right. So yeah, I mean, it's how, how many how many watts does it uh, require? So it requires type four, PoE plus plus type four. Um, but don't okay. it, it's not. I mean, C has been referring to it as a as an all in one display, right? Um, mm. Displays generally are all in one, otherwise they're broken. But uh, what he means is an all in one PC. Uh, yeah, and it's got a a um, actually a a performant PC uses mm-hmm. uses a Ryzen five chip um, in there, which is going to give i five plus performance. Um, yeah. So to get a computer and three displays running off a single network port um, for ba- power and data, obviously, I think is pretty impressive. Yeah. Mm. So w- when you're scaling up, you've got projects that you're scaling up that for, like whether it's for manufacturing, mm. whether it's uh, you know classrooms, offices, whatever. That you know the, the um, it you know. It's, it's really evident that you're going to make a lot of cost savings. You're going to reduce your your consumption of energy, and yeah, I mean, it, it kind of sells itself, especially as you kind of want to scale up. Is that running a full Windows 10 OS? It'll run Windows. It'll run Linux. They've got their own flavor of Linux. Um, any x86 platform. Yeah, right. Cool. Nice. cool, cool. I, I'm, right. I'm really surprised we haven't seen more of this though, because. I saw, um, geez, probably five, six, seven years ago, I, 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 um, Samsung had a, a display that was running off uh, HD base T. Uh, it was just had one cable uh, going to it, and I thought, oh well, this is this is the way that all displays are gonna are gonna be, and we we just haven't really seen any of that. I don't think it ever saw the light of day. I don't think it ever became a commercial product, but. You know, it was it was a concept that they had, and um, yeah, I'm just surprised it's taken this long to to build these kinds of products. It's, I think it's very different as well because it's not just the dumb display, is it? It's 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 the compute no, the, as well. It's the source yeah. as well as just being the sink. 
But I'm just saying, I, even if it was just the display, like, yeah. I mean, you know, why, right. why, why haven't we seen that? And, and, but the fact that they're rolling it into uh, having this all in one and having multiple displays, that kind of thing is, is quite incredible. Well, perhaps it's down to us to, uh, you know, pe people haven't realized that how much, how mm. much money and time can be saved by using PoE, the PoE revolution. Mm -hmm. like, well, welcome yeah. to the revolution. We could be yeah. the ones kicking it off today. There you well, go. Is it there a it challenge, is. Great, physical challenge. Great, great challenge. Great segue too. <laughs> yes, it's a, um, it's a fantastic. You put it out there, and uh, you blokes have, uh, you got some balls of steel. Yeah, yeah. You, you <laughs> put a big stand up at uh, ISE, and you flew the flag. And uh, all credit to you for. Um, for having a crack, you know, a lot of respect for you, blokes, to uh, to be able to just stand up and um, go. You know what? We believe in this, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna roll with it. So, uh, good on you. Cool. Thank you very much. I love being on the show. Yes. Always. <laughs> Tick that off my bucket list. <laughs> <laughs> oh look, you know, was if everyone else, uh, anyone else wants to get in the show, just stick your hand up. We'll um, it's, it's a long list, and you've been waiting for probably a, a year, you blokes, you know. So that's how long the list is. <laughs> <laughs> We've got to vet everyone before they come on the show. So uh, yeah. yeah, so you guys managed to get through the the uh, not so stringent vetting process. Yeah, yeah. The, f the first three minutes before we hit record. So well, well done, you. Like. Yeah. This <laughs> Mark, Mark must have been drunk at the time. Thanks, mate. Oh, look. You know, <laughs> yeah. On that note, I'm uh, I'm going to pour myself another whiskey. Well, I already have. Oh, what a <laughs> note. Um, <laughs> folks, want to say yeah. Uh, want to say big thanks for your time. Uh, good luck and um, yeah. yeah Go and fly that flag for, for POE and um, and for you folks in the UK. I hope uh, you keep kicking goals and, and um, the world keeps turning. It's great to be out. Uh, it's great to be on video. It's great to be getting out into uh, real trade shows. Just It's just a, a, you know, it's exciting time. My, you know, circling back right to your first opening statements, it was, it's, it's an exciting time to be back in the industry and, and um, definitely AV is it's fun. It's back. It's interesting, and uh, we're gonna have a crack at making it a whole lot more fun, eh, Pete? Exactly. Make AV great again, Mark. That's Make what it's AV all about. No, I don't have my red shirt. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Didn't want to rain your parade. Ah, uh, gents. Look, we're gonna sign off for now. Thank you so much for your time, fellas, and uh, we'll see you again next time, eh? Thanks look a lot for yourselves. Cheers. Thanks, guys. <laughs>